a special award from the president of the World Bank as an incentive, as uh, has been uh, suggested, as an incentive for effective, determined, concrete action on the ground, for good management of habitats, for people who can make the illegal trader and poachers feel the heat of our action, for communication. And this is the last thing I'll... We want to use this, this award as a communication theme. You want to communicate, not just, it's not that it's a big thing that I am sure my president won't like to, it, for me to position it as something great or anything, but it is, a, it would be a simple expression of his interest and his passion and the recognition. We will put this all together as a team and we'll make it happen. So that is something I wanted to convey to you. I would like to use this opportunity to do a bit of a word of thank, and they have been given a rather long list. The first on the list is the Kathmandu Global Tiger Workshop organizing team. I want to really congratulate you, not only for your commitment, and the hard work that you put, but for your patience in dealing with us when we sit in Washington at different times and to get decisions out of us. So I would really like to thank you for your patience and your determination in making that happen. Mr. Yubraj Bhusal, Secretary of the Organizing Team. The Workshop Management Committee who took quick decisions very sharp, quick decisions, and I always felt that was amazing, uh, the way uh, all this happened. When National Geographic was here, the decision that National Geographic can come and film and do, taken in five minutes, and it was cleared by the minister in the next two minutes. So I, it took seven minutes for these guys to be cleared and brought in. So this is amazing, you know? The kind of business, what shall I say, the businessmen like environment and, and corporate envi environment that the Honorable Minister has been able to create in his department it is really refreshing to see that happening so quickly. So <coughs> oh, one thing, National Geographic incidentally has got you all on the film. It's really interesting that they, they were quietly sneaking around and taking films and interviewing people. And it is good that National Geographic is interested in what we are trying to do. It's a global thing. They work in 32, com uh, I mean, the, all the so many countries of the world, and in 32 languages. So our message needs to go. We have to be, each one of us, have to learn how to communicate. We have this weakness in ourselves. <laughs> and we should learn by the tiger how the tiger communicates in a forest. Each tiger communicates its own territory, and everybody knows there is a tiger in the forest. Sometimes we don't know, but at least the dwellers of the forest know there is a tiger in the forest. We have to learn communication, because I have seen, every time I talk about that there are only three and a half thousand tigers left to anybody, they show, what? Only three and a half thousand tigers? When I was landing here, I said Nepal has 121 adult tigers. And there was a team of people coming in. So they were looking at all the placards and beautiful exhibition. <laughs> and this guy got off. He said, this is tiger country, you know, this tiger land. So I said, yeah, I'm also going to participate. How, how many tigers are there? I said, it's about 121. He said, what? I thought there'll be 2,000 tigers here. It would be, I'll be able to see a tiger anywhere I go. This is the image of Nepal. This is the image of India. But what is happening in reality is that people don't know how the crisis has manifested itself. And we have to know, make people know so that people react to this. That is important. And I'd like to invite our country director, Sue Goldmark. Um, I've been to a lot of workshops and conferences, um, maybe too many. And it's really very rare to have this level of energy in the room. And to also have an event by which you have um, an honest discussion around some difficult questions. So I think that in, of, in and of itself, what I witnessed this morning, 
is a very important step forward, which, which maybe also gives us a hint of how to tackle some other difficult issues. So I wanted to just um, congratulate all of you here. I think that you've come a long way in three days, and I'm personally very honored to have been a part of this. And I'd like to thank, of course, the government of Nepal, but I'd also like to give a word of thanks to Keshav, whose um, professionalism, passion, and may I say persistence, has been one of the guiding um, uh, reasons why uh, we've we've maintained our focus on tigers um, through the through the president's office. I was asked to just say a few words in terms of the specifics, the little picture of Nepal, of what we might be doing and are doing right now um, to add to um, this effort. And and so there are basically uh, three things that we are committing to. First. Um, we started by talking about linking poverty and conservation. That is, that the interests of the poor have to be linked to the interests of conserving the tiger. And we do have an ongoing initiative. Uh, I've always found that to start something new takes much longer than uh, we, we often think at the beginning. So the good thing is that this is already ongoing. We have an effort with the government of Nepal through the Prime Minister's office, uh, the Poverty Alleviation Fund, which already supports communities in buffer zones to address the needs of the poor. And there are 30 community groups being supported in Chitwan, and we uh, hope to increase our outreach of, uh, of this uh, effort to communities in Bargia and Suklafanta. So that, I think, is one specific thing. Second, um, we've heard uh, very heartening news that the government has committed to expanding the Bardia National Park by 900 square kilometers. And um, we would be very uh, honored to be part of the team that could help assess um, what that would mean in terms of support for relocation, uh, as was stated in the communication, voluntary relocation, but done in a way that works to the interests of those living there, infrastructure, communication, enforcement, and livelihoods. So we, uh, we would be very happy to participate in that. Third, um, ideas are good, but organization is even better. And so Nepal has agreed to host the secretariat, and we are very um, pleased to help support that through financial and technical resources. Um, in terms of all these efforts, what I'm going to be asking is for our teams to work together in terms of tangible results that we commit to in the next two years. Um, the result of doubling tigers in 10 years is extremely laudable and very tangible. The question then becomes, can we have some shorter term uh, uh, objectives which are very clear in terms of results to hold ourselves accountable for? In terms of the longer term commitment, we are working on um, a pilot program for climate resilience. This is a new program of the World Bank. Nepal is one of nine countries to participate, and this program will be seeking to identify ways to basically um, integrate climate resilience and biodiversity into the entire portfolio of the government as well as the donor community. It's a very big job, but it's a way that we see trying to make sustainable economic development a reality. And this is learning by doing. So it's not going to be perfection, but it is going to be starting on a journey that, will, that Nepal will take a leadership role on and we hope then will also be done by other countries. So thank you very much. This has been extremely, um, uh, energizing for me personally. I woke up this morning, I put on tiger colors to, uh, to uh, help uh, in terms of the energy of the event. So thank you, and I uh, hope that um, you carry this enthusiasm back to your home countries. Thank you. May I request Honorable Minister for his remarks, and before giving remarks, release our brief tiger